Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to talk about some very important commands that as an email security appliance admin you should know about. So in the Cisco Secure Email Gateway, these are the commands that are supported. The first command I want to talk about is the last command. So last, when you run this command, it basically tells you the users that are logged in to the appliance um, and the recently logged in users as well, because as you can see, for the first one, it shows still logged in and the other ones are previous entries. So the so basically, it's going to show you all the users uh, that have logged in. Now, you might be wondering, why don't I see a user that's possibly currently logged in from uh, the graphical user interface? In that case, you can run the who command it's basically going to tell you, hey, this user is actually logged in from the GUI and the other user from which I'm currently showing you these commands is logged in from the CLI. So Asan is logged in from the GUI, the graphical user interface. It tells you the time as well and the remote host IP address as well. So let's say, okay, let me do this. Just go ahead and log out from the, the GUI. Okay, done. I run the who command now and I see that um, I don't see Isan there anymore. That's because I logged out from the GUI. Well, okay, let's move on to the next command. So it's who am I? Who am I? Once you run this command, it tells you of the currently logged in user, the full name of the user and the groups that it is a part of. Right? And uh, this particular command can be executed uh, from uh, all the three machine modes, unlike the previous command like last, which you can execute from the machine mode. Uh, let's talk about find event. I don't know, a lot of people don't use this command, but this is extremely important when it comes to checking the logs and troubleshooting, right? So if I, let's say, okay, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and say tail mail logs just to get an MID from here. So, oh, that's too big. Um, okay, let me do uh, wrap MID from uh, the mail logs. Okay, I got one of the MIDs, let's say 159, right? So how can I reuse the find event command? When you run the find event command, uh, you can mention the MID, which is the second option, a search by message ID, and then you can mention the MID. You hit enter and mention the logs from which you want to search it. You hit enter the current log file and so on. So as soon as I hit enter, it gives me literally all the information related to this particular MID. Um, this command is extremely useful for those people who, let's say, are not good with grep and they don't know what, what to do with the grep command. Well, this is the command for you, the find event command, extremely useful. And it's not just uh, limited to uh, message ID. You can search with envelope from uh, the subject and the envelope to as well. So this is another extremely important command um, that helps you a lot with troubleshooting as well. So let's move on to the um, another command. Well, let's say you want to view the progress of email activity on your system in real time. In that case, you run the rate command. Once you run the rate command, you can mention how often you want, how frequently you want the updates. So I can say one second, two seconds, and so on. So I can say two in this case. So what is all this output? Let me just stop it for now. And let me inform you about this. Connections in are the number of inbound connections, number of outbound connections, uh, recipients, how many are received on the system, how many are completed, that's the recipients received, and delta is nothing but the difference. Change in received, which is this one, the received, and the completed recipient since the last data update. And what is the QK used? Uh, the QK used is basically the size of the message queue and this K actually stands for kilobytes, right? And uh, let's say you don't want, uh, you know, general information for every other, other host. You want it specifically to be a, for a certain host. In that case, you run the host rate command and you mentioned the host uh, for which you're looking uh, for this information specifically. You mentioned that, you mentioned the number of seconds and so on. That's pretty much it. And that's uh, this is something you can specifically do for a host. So uh, that 
covers up the host rate as well. Another command that I would like to talk about is the top in command. So basically when you run the top in command, right, it displays the top hosts by number of incoming connections. Okay, so when you run this, you'll see the uh, incoming hosts, incoming connections here. Um, although that information is not here. And why is that? That is because I don't have any traffic on this ESA at the moment. So it gives you the remote host name, remote IP address of the listener, and the connection in, right? And which is uh, the connection is basically uh, tells you how many connections are currently made from that particular remote host uh, to your ESA, as simple as that. So that's the top in command. Let's move on to the next command. Let's say you want to wipe the core files uh, from the system. So how do you do that? You run the wipe data command. And with this command, you can actually do two things. You can check the status and the core dump as well. When you run the core dump, that is basically when you're instructing it to go ahead and wipe the core files on the disk. And if you run the status, it's just going to tell you the last uh, time you did the wiping on, on your appliance. Now, if I run the status command to begin with, it says successful because I've run this, I have executed this command before. If uh, you have never executed this command, then it will show up as unknown. Okay, now if I go ahead and do a wipe data and then a core dump, this is how it's gonna look. I hit enter, it says in progress and that's it. So when it's complete and uh, let's say it was showing unknown and once it's complete, it's going to show up as successful without any problems, right? Okay, let's move on to the next command. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the disk coda config. Once I run this command, with this command, you are able to uh, view the disk allocation for these services. These are the services, and this is where you view this information, spam quarantine, PVO reporting, tracking, and so on. And not just view, you can actually go ahead and configure it as well. So you can configure it using the edit that you see right here, right? So let's say, for example, if I go ahead and run the edit on this, it asks me for which service. Let's say I wanna do it for um, spam quarantine. Um, which is selected by default, as you can see. I want to change it to, let's say, three. I did it, and this code I changed from five to three, as you can see right here. It was five. Now it is a three. Uh, why would you even check it in the first place? Well, it helps you a lot where you see that the disk um, is 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 getting um, exhausted and it does not have the space it does not have a lot of space available anymore and those are the things that you can check in the display alerts anytime right um you should get alerts for it if you if you have not configured alerts or, or all that stuff you can check out my video on alerts uh, that's going to help you a lot in configuring alerts so let's talk about uh dane verify let's say you want to verify if a certain domain supports Dane or not. This is the easiest way to check that out. So once you run this command, you, you tell it which domain you want to check it for. So you say, for example, Cisco.com, you go ahead and hit enter. Well, it gave you the result uh, right away. That's because I've already checked it. It should be cached. So let's say I want to do, yes, I want to do it for another domain. I want to say Microsoft.com, for example. It's going to take its sweet time to fetch this information. Uh, so for, for those of you who don't know uh, what Dane is, well, Dane is basically a DNS-based authentication of named entities. Uh, you can check more information about it um, in the user guide as well. And if you want to configure Dane for a certain domain, you can uh, configure it from the destination controls. Or if you want to do it from the CLI, you can do it using the dest config command. So this is the command. Right, so um, I think the video is already longer than expected. I wanted to talk about a more, um, a lot more commands, but I think I'll just wrap it up for now. Um, I'm gonna possibly come up with another video for the rest of the commands, or if you want more details on any specific command, just let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to do that. I just wanted to, you know, let you know in this video that these commands do exist, and these are extremely helpful and uh, extremely powerful as well especially those commands that you know you should avoid running in the production time 
right? Um, just go for a network downtime and then go ahead and do that. Anyways, um, I'll, I'll possibly talk about it more based on the demand. And um, yeah, those of you who are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And you guys have a great day. Pleasure to have you here. Um, goodbye.